Well, hello everybody. I know it's been a long time. And I'm very sorry if anybody was very confused about why I was not putting videos. Uh, with this crisis thing, I've been actually working more than ever. And as you can imagine, after eight hours of just pounding th my head through Clo, the last thing I want to do is, uh, you know, spend more time with Clo because these videos actually take me a lot of time. I'm not uh, one of those experts that do them that quickly. So, <clears throat> uh, but today I figured I wanted to show something uh, to everybody because I discovered something just today while I was giving class. So it's not a continuation of the series. It's going to be more like a tip uh, on sequins, actually, uh, because the making sequins in Clo is not an easy task. And so I decided to show you what I discovered today to make very cool and, you know, quote, quote, easy to do sequins that look actually great in Clo. Uh, because let's consider the possibilities. Possibility number one or the option number one is to model the sequins like a 3d shape and put them in clo one by one by hand which is obviously impossible maybe it's okay if the graphic is supposed to be small but of course it's not viable if your graphic is supposed to be gigantic uh, the other possibility is what clo actually suggests is, is that you use the top stitch tool to create that the only problem being that if there's overlapping uh, of uh, sequins which you often have uh, you are going to have problems with that and also the top stitching sometimes tends to bend or uh, deform the shape of whatever you are trying to use as a top stitch <clears throat> and also when you're using the top stitch tool you cannot uh, have 3d objects being duplicated you know in the top stitch tool you have the option to create 3d top stitch and also flat top stitch and when you create custom top stages with your own shapes, they have to be flat. They have to be images. So I'm proposing a third option that I think uh, I really like. And it all starts in Photoshop. Step number one is going to be we're going to create a new brush that's going to look like a sequin. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's uh, many Photoshop wizards that are going to do this much better than I can because I'm not an expert in Photoshop. So I created this canvas. It's uh, only... 512 by 512 in pixels <clears throat> uh, so it's a simple one and it's white as you can see and i'm going to paint with a very simple brush a large circle a black circle in the middle so in order to know where the middle is i'm going to click and drag from the well sorry i don't know why that didn't work so click and drag from the ruler to the center until it snaps and now i can see where the circle is it's going to be more a guideline but yeah uh, then I'm going to activate the brush and I'm going to paint uh, black, a very big black circle, which is going to be uh, my sequence. As you can see, I have so many tests uh, there already. So I'm going to change the size to something appropriate. Uh, the resolution of the canvas is going to determine the resolution of your brush. Okay, so if you find this resolution to be too low, uh, only make the canvas bigger. So I'm going to click there and I have just giant dark. Uh, spot in the middle. Now I'm going to press on my keyboard X to bring white so I can paint a circle in the middle, which is where the sequin it's supposed to be sewn from. So thanks to these rulers, it's very easy for me to click there and get this white spot. Something I've been also experimenting is to making uh, like a little detail to mimic where the uh, thread would be uh, with black. Uh, something completely optional. It's uh, such a tiny detail that I don't even think you will be able to see it, but uh, there you have it. <clears throat> uh, it, had to be, it has to be black and white because the brushes in Photoshop, they work like this. So black is everything that's going to be opaque and white is everything that's going to be transparent. So with this done, I will go to edit and then I will, I know it's in Spanish, but just look in your Photoshop and you should go to edit and then you should go where it says define uh, as brush. So click there. And now you have, uh, you can rename your brush. So let's name it something like um, Sequin Brush, um, I don't know, zero 01. Okay, now it's defined as a brush. You can see that if I create a new layer in Photoshop, and I make maybe my brush a little bit smaller. If I paint, I will be painting this very simple, um, <clears throat> very simple sequence. But 
This is not enough. Uh, that's not going to give you the result that you want. The result that you want, uh, it's a more dynamic, uh, more dynamic looking sequence. That is, sequence that <clears throat> have actually a direction to them. So that when a sequence faces the light, it shines. And if it's not facing the light, it doesn't. So in order to do that, we need to create a normal map out of it. Now, if you don't know what a normal map is, don't worry about that. Probably in other videos, I will also explain it. You can also go to the internet to find out more about that. But a normal map is basically an image that uses RGB colors to store directional information. That is, if it's, uh, you know, the color is more towards purple, it means that it's looking towards the left. If the color deviates towards green, it means that it's looking towards the, I don't know, up. And if the color goes towards red, it means that it's looking up. Okay, so three colors, RGB, store information. Painting that by hand, it's actually very difficult. But what we can do is ask Photoshop to paint each and every sequin with a different shade of this normal map range, which I will show you in a minute, so that each and every sequin has its own personal shade. That's going to make it so that when you put this in Clo, that normal map is going to ask Clo to shade every sequin in a slight different angle, making it look as it's a bunch of sequins and all of them are looking in different directions. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we have already created the brush. You can see that now if I click and drag, it's just a continuous line. But in Photoshop, you can open the Photoshop, sorry, the brush, uh, the brush options. And we can make a couple of changes here. The first one being uh, how many strokes do we want? So if you go to shape of the brush, we have here spacing. So if you turn it on, you can actually adjust this slider to have you know, less sequins or more sequins, which is actually great. So if you want some overlap, you can have them <clears throat> overlap like this. Next thing, we're going to change the, the color of them. So for that, we are going to go to dynamics of color. So color dynamics, just click on there. And it's going to turn it on by default. And then what we have to do is we have to turn on this first option, which is going to make it so that every instance of the brush will have a variation only in hue okay we want the hue to vary i'm gonna i'm gonna give you now the base color that you want and then every time a new instance of the brush it's created the hue will vary and you want a 10 percent i don't recommend going above 10 percent you can always exaggerate the normal map inside clo so a 10 percent variation will be fine so you can leave the rest as is. We only need the hue to vary towards red or towards blue. Again, three tones, we don't need anything else. And that's going to be enough to create the illusion of the sequent. All right, so now that this is done, let's put a couple of numbers here for the correct RGB. Uh, you cannot usually, you cannot use any color that you want, actually. Normal maps don't work like that. So we need to have a base color. So the base, uh, the base color we are going to use is 132 on the red, 147 on the green, and 252, 53, sorry, on the blue. You can see that it's a very, um, I don't know, it's a very curious shade of uh, purple, blue-ish. And so when the hue varies, it's going to vary between uh, the, the RGB. So now, <clears throat> if you test and paint, you will see that every sequin has a different shade of blue. You see that some of them deviate towards the red, and so they get more purple. purple. Some of them deviate towards the green, so they get more light. We are missing a little bit of 3 dness but that's going to give you enough variation. Okay, so now let's put this to the test. You actually don't need to do anything else. The only thing that you would vary would be to go to the uh, to general settings and change the spacing of your sequins, depending on how far away you want them to be. So in the same canvas, because it's uh, enough for me, I'm going to actually make a very quick test. So for example, if I start painting while holding shift, I can make very straight lines and you can see that I get a very nice overlap and you can distinguish every sequin very clearly because each and every one has its own shade. Uh, some of them will coincide, of course, but um, you get a very clear sense that they each in every sequin, it's its own individual element. 
So this is going to be our normal app. Now, uh, before moving on to Clove, because this is uh, already a good enough example, <clears throat> I'm going to save uh, this brush so that I can use it in future projects. So to save the brush, uh, it's as simple as going to the where we changed everything and clicking on this thing. Uh, if you click on this option, you can save the brush. So you can put it a name, so second brush in my case two, and turn on all the options because you want to capture the size. You want to capture also the adjustments that we have just made, uh, the hue variation and all that. And also uh, you want to include this base color that I just gave you. So just click on that. You will have saved your uh, brush. So we're gonna save this image as a PNG to preserve the <clears throat> transparency of the image. Now don't worry about the colors because in Clo you can always desaturate this image to get rid of every trace, any trace of color and we can recolor it later on. So we are only interested in this normal map. Now I suggest you save this with a name that you can tell that it's uh, the normal map. So maybe underscore it as, I don't know, graphic underscore normal. So you can locate it very easily. Now let's jump into Clo and see how everything is going to look like. So here we are in Clo. I just loaded the regular garment that comes with Clo. I just added also an avatar to being able to simulate. <clears throat> and let's add now the graphics. So I'm going to click on add graphic and locate my uh, the map that we just created in Photoshop. There it is. It's very tiny, so I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, usually I don't recommend changing the size of the graphic inside Clo, but since we use the same canvas that we used to create the brush. Uh, it's very small, so, you know, it's just a test. So I'm going to make it bigger, like so, so we can see. Maybe that was too big. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm going to take the color out uh, just so we can see a plain image that's not going to be very attractive, but we will see how it changes when we add normal map. So. I will activate the high quality rendering and then in texture, I'm going to click on the saturate to take the color out. Uh, sometimes or usually what I do to make sure that this is pure white so that any color that I add gets uh, multiplied correctly, I always lower the shadow intensity to minus 50 and I bump up the uh, brightness all the way to 1 to ensure that it's complete white. This way, even if I add any strange color, it will be multiplied correctly. I'm not going to do that now because I'm going to change this to metallic. And this is what I should have. As you can see, nothing that looks very attractive, but let's now bring in the normal map and we shall see what effect this will have. And there you have it. Thanks to this normal map, every sequin has its own directionality. You can see that even if without the normal map, which you can do by deactivating and putting it zero, it looks like a complete and solid image where it's just a, a row of semicircles. When you add the effect of the normal map, every sequin it's perfectly visible and you can see that they behave correctly. You can see that every sequin is looking in a different direction. That's when you rotate. Some of them sparkle, some of them don't, depending if they are looking towards light or not. You can also see that in this row that we just created, uh, the sequins just follow the line, yet all of them are completely visible. The overlaps are also, uh, you can change the direction, directionality. You can see that by starting from <clears throat> right to left, you basically place, or from left to right, I don't remember, you can basically place different sequins one on top of each other and basically build up uh, different uh, sequins. You can, of course, uh, make it differently to get some sequins on top of uh, other section. And of course, since you are in Photoshop, you can use layers and you can also use all sort of tricks to make uh, much more interesting sequins. So there you have it. <clears throat> it looks uh, great. Actually, you can uh, now play around with the roughness of the sequins to get more dull sequins. You can also change the color of them uh, to have different color sequins. That's going to be completely up to you. And of course, you can change the material to make them look like black plastic should you want to. Okay, so this is going to be a very short video. Um, I don't know if I'm going to upload anything soon. So I'm very sorry if you find this is not the appropriate content that you were waiting for. But I thought I would share this uh, because it's very easy and it actually answers a question that I had for a long time. How to make efficient, quick and good looking uh, sequins that can fit uh, a working environment, a uh, fast paced, fast fashion working environment. 
because we don't have time in this day and age to spend, you know, five hours just placing each and every sequin. So with this brush, you will be able to create all your different patterns. So yeah, thanks for viewing and till the next time. Thank you.